everybody, I'm Roshan Sullivan from Rare Arts and Crafts. I produce the children's art trails in the grounds of the Glebe Gallery. I've been asked by the very wonderful people of the Glebe to show you guys how to recreate your own ladybird trail in your own back garden. When I produced this trail for the Glebe, I painted lots of different ladybirds on lots of different surfaces, such as old timbers, stones, pebbles, bits of slate, even a tree stump or two. So, have a look around your garden, your house, and see what you can find to paint ladybirds on. So the children and I have been busy painting ladybirds on different rocks and stones, slate that we found on walks and around the house and in the garden. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint a egg shape. And I'm going to go a bit bigger with what I've started here to fill this lace a little bit more than I had first intended to. So I'm using acrylic paint, it's red acrylic paint that I got from one of the discounted stores. Um, it will dry like a plasticky finish and will be waterproof for outside, not indefinitely but enough for a summer trail in your own back garden. So again I'm just going to add the red paint. Now I like to anchor my hand um, and it's a good trick to teach children to anchor your hand and to drag the paintbrush around. It gives you a nice clean line as you can see and it gives a nice control to the outside line. It's great to build up fine motor skills also and when they're holding a paintbrush and building up those skills it does help with handwriting and the other key skills for the school for them. Again, I'm just painting that in. I think that's big enough. So I'm going to leave that to dry and come back to do the black dots. Now, so we're going to paint in the head first. So I'm just going to go up to that red line there and the top of the egg shape, bring the line back down and give it that scoop. Turn the slate to suit you. Come back this way, drag the paintbrush, nice clean line, and then add in the top part there. We'll just add that in, like so. Really quick, really easy. Great for children to do themselves. I think that's the thing to let them lead, let them show you what they can do. They will surprise you with their talents. And it's not about right or wrong. It's about letting them just be creative, I think. Um, so there's two the spots on there. As you can see, I'm placing my paintbrush down and I'm twisting it around like so. And again, I'm going to go another one here on this side, circle-ish, circles, twist that paintbrush and then we're going to go pick up a little bit of paint on a paintbrush on the side and just dab that through the centre, like so. It doesn't have to be perfect by any means, a little bit of texture I love. Um, we're going to let that dry, we're going to come back and do the blue colour wash in the background. So I'm just creating a little bit of a colour wash here for the background, um, a little bit of blue and white mixed together. I've run out of acrylic white in the lockdown, so I'm just using what I had left in the white poster paint. You can use poster paint for all of this but what I would say it will wash away if it gets rained on so maybe just a little bit of a spray of varnish over the top of it you can get all these materials that I use in any of the discounted shops around your area so here we go we're gonna just pop this down onto the slate let's be as creative as you like with this right out to the edges 
You can do this with either a blue wash or green wash or any color really. And it just adds a little bit extra to the background of your slate or your timbers. Let's get all that down like so. All the way around the background. Now, when we get up to the ladybird, we're going to drag the paintbrush again. A nice clean line. I think what a lot of people do is this. And as you can see, I'm not getting a nice clean line. So if we learn to drag the paintbrush, we get a nice clean line. Again, dragging the paintbrush. Again, these paintbrushes as well, um, just from a discounted store. There's a pack of them from quite large paintbrushes down to small, and they are quite cheap for paintbrushes. There are other more bristly type paintbrushes which are fine for this type of outdoor work as well. Now, just crisscross over that a little bit, just lose some of those larger brush strokes, add into the texture, and you get really nice textures then when this dries of the slate, a little bit of highlights of the texture on the slate also. So this is almost dry. Um, I'm gonna add in just the little antennae and little feet to the ladybird by just picking up a little bit of the black paint on the paintbrush and just dabbing the antennae and the feet onto the side of the body. Now, there are bits of the red on this that are a little bit transparent, so I'm just going to add back into that, which is fine too. And drag that around like so. Bring that up and around here and just add a little bit of a second coat onto the body there of the ladybird. This is a bit of an unusual one. I chose to do two little ladybirds peeking out. And these do count when you're going around the trail to find how many ladybirds are in your garden. Little ones peeking out are the tricky ones that they have to find. So we're going to put in a little head here on the red body that was already painted. And you'll find all the different surfaces that you paint on need a little bit more attention. This one's a little bit porous. So we just need to add in a little bit more paint to it. Again, anchoring the hand, dragging the paintbrush, getting a nice clean line, this black acrylic paint. And again, with acrylic paint, make sure they're in all clothes because it doesn't come off clothes. It's not like the poster paint that the children use at school that does come off their clothes. I'm just at the time. And then I'm gonna put a little line on it here and then just the corner of a couple of little black spots. And these count as ladybirds on their trail. And then on this one here is the back of a ladybird. So I'm just gonna do larger circles painted on that red. Again, twisting that paintbrush around to give us those nice little circle-ish shapes. Um, we can come back in because again this is uh, this rock this uh, brick's a bit porous so we're just going to circle them around like so twisting them around and I'm going to add in that line there 
add in two little legs. Oops, come back at more paint. Two little legs here and here. Come back up to our little friend here and add in two little antennae. There we go. So then we have the Ladybird Trail from start to finish. I really hope you have great fun recreating the Ladybird Trail in your own back garden and thanks for watching.